Hi, welcome to yet another episode on the STEER platform. My name is Dr. Sridhar Ganpati. I'm a practicing pediatrician from Mumbai. The STEER platform is an educational initiative by my teacher, Dr. Y.K. Ambedkar. And the topic for the day, mouth ulcers. So what is a mouth ulcer? A mouth ulcer is nothing but a breach in the epithelial continuity or integrity in the oral mucosa which could extend up to the lamina propria and sometimes even beyond. Very painful affects speech, deglutition, chewing, speaking, drinking and that gets you to the opinion. In the evaluation of a mouth ulcer, you need to take the origin, duration, progress, dietetic history, dental history, medical history, drug history. And you need a peep into the lifestyle habits because it's not just alcohol, smoking, tobacco, betel nut, pan, mawa, chewing, but it is even now snorting of cocaine and ecstasy. A mouth ulcer could just be a benign thing which resolves on its own, transient phenomena, or it could be a sign of a systemic disorder, like an inflammatory bowel disease, a celiac disease, or it could be the beginning of a malignancy. So what are the causes of mouth ulcers? So when you go to the causes of mouth ulcer, we use the mnemonic SICK, S stands for systemic, like I told you it could just be a sign of a systemic disorder, so it could be a GIT problem like celiac disease, malabsorption, enamel hypoplasia, mouth ulcers, it could be IBD, stunting of growth, perianal lesions, oral lesions, oral ulcers, blood in stools. It could be a rheumatological disorder, it could be an autoimmune disorder like systemic lupus erythematosus. The second category is eye. And when we talk about eye, eye is the commonest thing that causes an ulcer, injury. So in the newborn period, it could be the over-enthusiastic suctioning of the newborn's oral cavity. It could be natal and neonatal teeth causing physical injury. It could be the orocentric habit as the child grows and starts putting things into the mouth, the toys, the pen, the pencil. It could be the hot pizza, the hard wafer chips rusk, or the hot soup that could give rise to a caustic burn on the mucosa and result in an ulcer. And as you grow up and get into adolescence, it could be the whitening creams that are applied on the dentition which could be caustic. Also in the infancy and in adulthood we need to talk about a condition called pouching wherein we find it a bit difficult to swallow certain drugs and when you give an aspirin in the infancy what happens is if it remains in the oral cavity for a long time so also bisphosphonates like alindronate in an adult for osteoporosis if it remains in the oral cavity for a long time can give rise to a corrosive ulcer. So this usually covers up most of the injuries, though we should not forget a broken tooth, a caries which has broken, or a dental appliance, which could be a wire, which could be a plate. The second category is infections. And in the infection, the famous ones are the herpes simplex, one and herpes simplex two that can give rise to small round to oval ulcers around the uh, anterior periphery of the tongue very painful and in the interdental papillae what we call as herpetic gingivostomatitis and when you get the same ulcers in the posterior part of the mouth the soft palate the fauces the area behind the molars it's called herpangina, the Coxsackie virus. You can have the Coxsackie, the echo, the entro giving rise to a similar picture in the posterior part of the mouth along with a vesicular eruption on the knee, the buttocks, the hand, feet, periodal area, what is known as the hand-foot-mouth disease. So you could have 
any virus, it could be an Epstein-Barr virus, it could be a cytomegalovirus, the HIV virus, giving rise to oral ulcers. You can have deep fungal infections giving rise to oral ulcers. You can have TB and syphilis giving rise to oral ulcers. Diphtheria has come back with a bang. After infection, we have iatrogenic. Here we have drugs. And in the drug category, you need to know chemotherapeutics. You have radiation. And any drug like a strong NSAID, an antihypertensive, something that's used for angina pectoris like a nicorandal, penicillami, they can all give rise to oral ulcers. So a diet, a drug history is something that's very, very important. Procedures, dental procedures, uh, wherein you use an expansion plate, wherein you use wires, all these can also give rise to injuries and ulcers. So we have covered injury, we covered infection, we covered iatrogenic, now we come to infiltration, malignancies, oral squamous cell carcinoma, usually painless in the beginning and as they impinge on the bone, they become painful. Immune mediated like SLE, again they may be painless but they may bleed. And then you could have insufficiency. The insufficiency could be nutrients, macro, micro. It could also be an insufficient function or number of neutrophils. So the eye constitutes a very big portion in the genesis of an ulcer. And last comes cutaneous conditions or skin conditions which have oral manifestation, especially the vesicobullous eruption. So you could have an epidermolysis bullosa, you could have a pemphigus vulgaris, a mucosal pemphigus, you can have a lichen planus, you can have a linear IgA deposits. All these can give rise to ulcers. Now, how do I evaluate a mouth ulcer? So in the evaluation, you look at the ulcer. Is it a small one, less than one, less than one centimeter, more than one centimeter? Is it looking round, oval? Is it like a crater? Is it like a map? Is it solitary? Is it multiple? Is it acute, less than two weeks? Is it chronic, more than two weeks? Is it recurrent? Recurrent is you have a period when you don't have ulcers and then again you get your ulcers. So let's take first the acute category. In the acute category, you can have solitary or you can have multiple. In the solitary, it's usually traumatic or a condition called as necrotic sialometaplasia, wherein the, it's an ischemic necrosis of the small salivary glands. In the multiple, it's usually infections and the herpes infection. I've already told you herpetic gingivostomatitis, herpangina, hand, foot, mouth disease are the ones that are top of the charts. You can also have necrotizing ulcerative gingivostomatitis. You can also have chemotherapeutic agents that can give rise to multiple ulcers. In the chronic variety, you can have solitary, it could just be an, a trauma which, where the cause has not yet been identified and managed. It could still be a necrotizing sialometaplasia. And the infective ones could be tuberculosis, could be syphilis, could be a deep fungal infection. It could be an isnophilic ulcer or it could be the oral squamous cell carcinoma, which are crater-like, rolled edges, painless, and as they impinge on the bone, you get start getting pain. And you could have a preceding leukoplakia or erythroplakia or even a lichen planus. In the multiple uh, ulcers, it's usually the cutaneous disorders with vesicobullous eruption. So here you could have the pemphigoid variety, you could have the linear IgA or the lichen planus. In recurrent ulcers, we need to understand that the recurrent aphthous ulcer is the commonest, which comes beyond 10 years of age. And as you grow, it starts decreasing in intensity and frequency. And you could have the minor, the major, or the herpetic variety. The next category would be the cyclic neutropenia, wherein you get recurrent ulcers. You could also get recurrent ulcers with besets and recurrent ulcers with herpetic 
uh, lesions on the on the labia which is in healthy individuals oralis in immunodeficient individuals how do i treat these mouth ulcers it's an a b c d a for avoiding things like sodium lauryl sulfate a foaming agent that is seen in a lot of dental products that promote recurrent after stomatitis cinnamon and cinnamon aldehyde which can also predispose to recurrent after stomatitis certain additives preservatives benzonate certain food items like tomato raw tomato and chocolates in the anesthetic group wherein you want to numb the pain you have benzocaine you have lidocaine and you have choline salicylate which are applied topically then you have the b which stands for barrier mucoadhesives sucralfate and tannic acid applied locally promote epithelialization and protect the ulcer from the microflora and irritants c stands for control of infection control of inflammation control of infection would be rinses saline hydrogen peroxide triclosan chlorhexidine which even has some antiviral properties antibiotics like doxy mino which you can prepare a rinse and you can use it because local dysbiosis is a predisposing factor for recurrent after stomatitis and there are there is a link to organisms like streptococcus sanguis or oralis so we have finished control of infection control of inflammation here we could use steroids again topically you could have high potency steroids that are used as paste mucoadhesive gels sprays you could have an anti-inflammatory analgesic like diclofenac in an hyaluronic gel and once you finish off with c you go to d d is definitive therapy which i'm not going to discuss because of shortage of time and d stands for diet wherein you are going to be supplementing micro macronutrients so you have the b complex which is, includes folic acid b12 uh, you also include lysine you also include vitamin c vitamin d you include zinc all these are promoters of epithelialization thank you